Hey guys, it's that time of year. Everybody's getting their mowers ready. This video might be a little late for some of you. I know some people start cutting grass early. I want to do a springtime mower maintenance video. And this is the first time you all seen my mower. It's a 70s Montgomery Ward. It originally had a 12 horse Tecumseh engine on it. An engine right here. But I put a I put my favorite type of engine on it, the 12 horse Briggs flathead. I'm going to try to get into quite a bit of detail on this. First thing, while you're doing all the other work, it's best to put your battery on charge for a couple hours, depending on how bad it is. And it went up to about 4 amps and it's coming down pretty fast. That's a new battery. I just bought it last summer. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going past 6 or maybe 8 amps at the most on one of these small batteries like this. So uh, just keep, it, uh, keep an eye on it there. A lot of times on these batteries, they don't want to go past one or two, and that usually means they have a bad or weak cell in them. If your battery stays at three or four, or stays at two, you may need to replace it. Depends on how good it cranks your motor or not. Another thing to check is your air filter. Make sure it's clean, and if it's extremely dirty and you can't clean it, it's best to replace it. Cover off here. This is like a pre-filter around it here. Let me get this off. This is your actual filter. You can't always go by looks on it. Uh, this filter is old and it looks new. I'm just going to blow it out with air. Shoot some air through here and watch your eyes anytime you work with air like that. And the same for this. Uh, you don't want no dirt to get in your eyes. There ain't a whole lot of stuff coming out in this one. Let me get that one here in a second. And after cleaning, or if you decide to replace it, just put it back on here. Put these two nuts on. I always like these chrome air filters on these, these breathers. They look real nice on there, I think. I'll show you a couple more of your uh, other styles of breeders. Tecumseh usually have a style like that. And you just take the two wing nuts off there and it's basically the same. And the same for any Briggs. And if it's the older style like that, you just take out the two screws and you have a foam filter inside. Now you don't always have to do this. I recommend uh, pulling your spark plug, taking a look at it to see if uh, it needs cleaned or even replaced, depending on how bad it is. Now obviously I'm working on this thing in the cold, so I don't have to worry about getting burned or nothing. So let's take a look at it over here in the light. If you noticed, I'm running a, uh, get it focused here. I'm running an E3 spark plug. And they're supposed to be anti-fouling and it's supposed to last forever. And this actually looks pretty good, so I'm just going to put it back in there like it is. But if you got your regular style plug, you might want to take a wire brush to it a little bit or just replace it. And a good tip on spark plugs when you're putting these back in, don't over tighten them. You don't have to get them that tight. Just uh, use a ratchet here. Just barely snug them. That's all you need to do. I've actually got by with just hand tightening spark plugs before and never had no problem with it. Now, I used to take the blades off and sharpen them right before I cut grass for the first time in the spring. But I stopped doing that in the last few years because there's always a lot of small twigs laying around the yard. You can't always pick them all up, and you don't want to dull your blades the first time you cut it. So I wait till after the first time I cut it to sharpen the blades. Another thing, uh, I plan on doing an oil change. I recommend doing an oil change at least once or twice every year. I like to do it in the spring, that way you don't have to worry about it during the summer. Uh, it's best not to change oil on a cold engine because you get all the sludge in the bottom. You can't always get all the oil out of it. So what I like to do, I like to cut grass or just run the engine into medium throttle for about a half an hour or about 20 minutes to half an hour get the engine nice and warm and then drain it shut it off and drain it and I usually use a 30 weight oil but uh, I like to buy it in the 5 quart jug and you can't buy a 30 weight so I just bought 10W30 this year because it's cheaper by the quart 
And uh, you can run 10W30 or 30 weight in it, no problem at all. It's up to you. 10W30 is mainly for wintertime use, but you can run it in the summer. And if you've been following my videos, you've seen that I greased the axles and put new bushings on this and greased all the steering parts last summer. So I'm not going to fool with taking these tires off to, uh, to re-grease them. Because uh, if you noticed the video, I put quite a bit of grease on them anyway. I usually don't put that much on them. I don't know why I did. I guess I was just trying to stress that you can't put too much grease on a tire. It's best to pull off your rear tires and put a little bit of grease on the uh, rear axle. That way, if you ever pull your tires off, they're easier to get off. You don't have to fool with taking a hammer and beating them off. They'll just pull right off. If you need to see how to grease the front axles on one of these motors like this, I have a video on uh, replacing the bushings or bearings on these and also replacing all the bearings and greasing all the steerage steering parts but I'll uh, try to explain it briefly here first of all you gotta jack up your mower uh, I'd recommend putting jack stands in it just like working on a car you don't want it to fall on you mower ain't very heavy but it could still uh, hurt you then you pull out this cotter pin and remove your washer and your whole wheel just slide off the front axle then you just uh, put some grease on the axle, you put your tire back on, put your washer back on, and pop the clip back on, and you're done. And another thing I recommend doing is checking your quill assemblies for play. As you can see, the only movement there is I'm actually bending the blade on the deck. So if you got a, you might want to check to see if your quill assemblies are free too, because if they're locked up, you're going to burn your belts out. And it's also a good idea to take a look at all your belts, make sure they're not cracked and dry rod or anything, so it'd be good to go. Even though I'm waiting until I'll get done cutting grass, I always check your oil before you cut grass. That way, that way if you're a little low, you can go ahead and put some in. On this type with the oil plug, Briggs recommends to fill it up till it's overflowing. I kind of disagree on that. I like to put it somewhere between the top and uh, the bottom notch. And as you can see, it's about halfway between there, and it's about where I run it. But if you fill them up to the top right there, your oil slinger is getting flooded out, and it can't sling the oil properly. Well, I've just got the battery back in here. I'm going to tape up these connections real good in case it bumps up against the frame. It won't short out. Also, I got a strap to put around here. I'll show you here in a second when I get it done. I also want to make sure that none of these wires get down in your belts and stuff. I know most of y'all probably have newer mirrors, but you always want to check your wires like that because most of your newer mirrors don't have the battery here. They're underneath the seat in the back, usually where they're at in newer mirrors. And I, I like that better, really. A lot easier to get to. And plus, you don't have to use one of these expensive motorcycle batteries. This is the way most of your newer motors are set up with the battery under the seat. And if this is your case, after you get done charging it, be sure you put this rubber boot over top of the positive terminal. That way, when the seat comes down, you don't have to worry about nothing shorting up. And that's it. That's what I do. I just put the strap all the way around there and catching the wires. That way, you don't have to ever worry about any wires getting caught up in the pulleys or nothing. Here's a solenoid on this mark. And if you're wondering about what zip tie I'm using, I'm using these big old 24 inch zip ties. They work pretty well and it's uh, basically what the factory puts on them anyway. So. I hate these black gas tanks, but you don't ever know when it's at. And I've overflowed this thing so many times. You've probably seen me overflow today. I see it coming this time. Yeah, you gonna fill it all the way up. You gotta love the smell of gas. Fuel on here. Let it sit for a couple minutes. Ready for the first start since uh, fall. Last time we cut.
Okay, now I'm getting ready to do an oil change here and left the motor right out there while I got, just got through cutting grass. That's what type of oil I'm putting out there. Now what I like to do, I like to have an old container that's empty to put your old oil in. That way when you go to drop it off at your place to dispose of it, it's easier to do. You don't have to worry about uh, pulling with the container and might open up in your vehicle or nothing. Let's go change oil. Now remember, your motor's still hot, so uh, it's easy to get burnt while you're doing this. And now we're ready to put the fresh oil in. And like I said earlier, just let it drain. It'll drip there for a while. Now we're ready to start putting new oil in. And most single cylinder Briggs takes about a quart and a half of oil. I like to run about a quart and a quarter because of what I was talking about earlier. Now you don't have to. I just like to, I like to run the engine a little bit after an oil change. The way you make sure all the oil circulated in the engine, then I like to check it again just to make sure there's enough in it. So. Just let it run for a little while. I was going to sharpen the blades after this, but it's cutting pretty good and there weren't that many twigs in the yard, so I'm just going to leave it alone. I did do a video last summer on how to sharpen lawnmower blades, so if you need to see how to do that, look up that video. Well, thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you all in the next video.